In this video, we'll wrap up discrete random variables. We'll talk about the Poisson random variable, the Poisson process, and the hypergeometric random variable. So, so far, none of our random variables can measure events in a unit of time. So, for example, how many babies are born in the next minute, how many car crashes happen in the next hour. If we used a binomial random variable, we wouldn't know what to choose for n because there's no upper bound on uh, these quantities. But we're going to actually take the limit of the binomial. So, let's say we want to model babies born in the next minute. If the historical average is two babies per minute, here's one unit of time. If we break it into five small chunks, um, and we say at each of these five chunks, either a baby is born or not, then the p that would keep our average to two is two fifths because the expected value of a binomial is n p, and five times two fifths is two. But let's simulate time, so let's break it into smaller chunks. If n is 10, and at each one either a baby is born or not, then our p would actually go down to two tenths so that our average would maintain, be maintained at two. And then let's say n is 70, so we break it in, into even tinier intervals, and then p would be two over 70 to accommodate the average to be two. So let lambda be the historical average number of events per unit of time. We're going to let n go to infinity in such a way that np is always equal to lambda. So p is going to 0, and n is going to infinity, but np is equal to lambda. Uh, let xn be binomial with parameter n and lambda over n. This will make sure the average is lambda. And y will be the limit as n goes to infinity. Um, and this is called a Poisson random variable with parameter lambda. The probability mass function of a Poisson random variable is the limit uh, as n goes to infinity of this binomial PMF, and you actually end up getting this. So you can look at this if, if you want. Um, the Poisson random variable also sums to 1, the PMF. You can check this yourself using Taylor series as well. So now let's compute the expected value and variance of a Poisson random variable. Um, the expected value of xn is just n times lambda over n, which is just lambda. The variance of xn is n p 1 minus p, or uh, lambda times 1 minus lambda over n. And remember, y is our limit as n goes to infinity of xn. So the expected value of y is the expected value of this limit, uh, which is just the limit of the expected values, which is just lambda, because there's no n here. But the variance of a Poisson, uh, we just take the limit as of this variance as n goes to infinity, and this is 1 minus uh, 0. So you actually end up getting lambda as well for the variance. So uh, x is Poisson lambda if it um, measures the number of events that occur in a single unit of time, where the historical average was lambda. Um, here's the, the, we derived the expectation of variance earlier. So now let's do an example. So suppose Lookbook gets on average 120 new users per hour and QuickRAM gets 180 new users per hour independently. What's the probability that combined less than two users sign up in the next minute? Well, let's convert lambda to the same unit of interest. For us, it's a minute. So uh, on average, Lookbook gets two users per minute and QuickRAM gets three users per minute. Then their total actually is Poisson with parameter 5, because if two users per minute sign up here and three users per, uh, sign up per minute here, then on average five units sign up to combine. And so the probability that z is less than 2 is the probability uh, that it's 0 or 1, and you can just plug into the Poisson PMF and get our answer. So now we'll talk about Poisson process. So a Poisson process with rate lambda greater than 0 per unit of time is a continuous time process indexed by t from 0 to infinity, such that x of t is the number of events that happened so far in the interval 0 to t. So if t1 is less than t2, then x of t2 minus x of t1 is the number of events that happened between t1 and t2. This process has three properties. x of 0 is 0, because at time 0, there is 0 events. The number of events happening in any two disjoint intervals a and, b are and c and d are independent. So the number of events happening here and here are independent. And finally, the number of events in any time interval t1, t2 is Poisson with parameter lambda times t2 minus t1. So if la lambda events happen per one unit of time in two units of time, the average rate is 2 lambda, and so we would have a Poisson 2 lambda here, Poisson 3 lambda here. Finally, we'll talk about the hypergeometric random variable. So suppose there's a candy bag of n equals 9 total candies, uh, four of which are lollipops. Our parents allow us to grab three of them. And let x be the number of lollipops we grab. What's the probability we get exactly two lollipops? Well, the number of ways we can get uh, f uh, three candies is just 9 choose 3. So out of capital N, we choose little n of them. Uh, and we need to get exactly two lollipops out of four. So we have four choose two. So capital K is the total number of lollipops, choose a little number of lollipops. Uh, and then out of the other five candies, we need one of them. So uh, you, you can do something similar here. So this is the hypergeometric random variable PMF. It's the number of successes when drawing little n items without replacement from a bag containing capital N items, k of which are successes, and hence capital N minus capital K failures. And here are the mean invariants. Uh, you can actually derive it yourself, and you can read this if you're interested in deriving the expectation. And here's the zoo of random variables that we've talked about so far.